No air. Can you hear the music? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Shit gets me right fucking am. Oh. What do you call that? Like the, the mouth plate? Like, the face plate? Or what? Like? Falling both. <laughs> Wait. This part. Right here. This is where. Right? Coming up. Right there. That pause and then just like. Uh. All right. Welcome back to another episode of On the Throne with Dick. And shout out to Senjin Boychuk for that incredible intro outro music. Um, you know, like you find him all over all over the socials he's he's not a big creator he, you don't need to be a big creator but like he's not a very big creator he's just doing it because like he enjoys the jam you know he enjoys the jam sesh and like just shredding on the guitar and i love that the guy the guy doesn't care he's just he's doing it for himself and and no no apologies i love it um so shout out to that guy and on this week's episode, a guy I've been trying to get on for a while now, like fucking a guy that I, when I discovered, I like crash landed hard. I might have a man crush. Like I, I found this dude on, uh, on TikTok, I believe it was. And then I, and then, you know, I'm like, fuck, I got to get this guy on the podcast for sure. And, and, and here we are like three months. I don't know. What was it? I don't know. It was a couple months ago anyway. Um- I'm such a flake. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're not a flake. You're not a flake, bro. Anyway, we got Murph. What's up, man? So uh, thanks for having me, for one. I, uh, I'm i sorry it's such a hassle. This should have happened in Vegas. I, I, you know, um, no. But we'll, we'll no. get to that. <laughs> yeah. It, we, we were going to do it while you were in Vegas. But um, you know how everyone has a hangover story? Or, or the movie The Hangover. Um, there's a reason why most podcasts don't happen when, when, when I want them to. And, and that's because there's a much larger story at play. And, uh, you know, it, the podcast game is, a, I say it all the time, you know, cat and mouse, right? And, you know, when I catch you, I'll catch you. But, you know, the, when it doesn't happen when it's supposed to happen, it's generally because something, there's a storyline that has to unfold there first, right? And I'm glad it didn't happen that night in Vegas, man, because you wouldn't have a Vegas story to tell me. I, uh, I'll, I'll say one thing. Uh, my buddy did tell me he, because uh, I was trying to connect the dots and what happened that night and, and retrace what the fuck happened. And, uh, my buddy was like, yeah, I got a, I remember I got a Snapchat from you and you were dancing with a few midgets in the street. I'm like, huh? Like, no, no, no. <laughs> no. I'm like, well, I'm, I'm glad Blacked Out Murphy had fun. So good for him. Uh, I wish I could recall. So um, I'll backtrack. I was in Vegas for class for the Carpenters Union. Went out the first night, had uh, three beers, three beers. I was on Fremont Street, and uh, the last thing, the last thing I remember was looking up at those lights on Fremont Street, and it was like uh, it was just a bunch of fish. It was cool, and then it was like I blinked, and I woke up on the side of the fucking road. And was, <laughs> there was a crew of guys. They were. Uh, they were laying down cones or whatever. And I, I woke up to one guy like poking me in the side, like, Hey man, you all right. And I looked around. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> so I looked at my phone. I had like 5% left on it. Flooded with calls, texts, uh, from my coworkers, from my wife. Did you freeze? You might have froze. Lost you for a second? Yeah, you froze there. So you woke up from uh you woke up from I, a bunch uh, of calls and texts from your wife and your goers. That's what I got. Shit. 
I wonder if I go on. I wonder if I take the Wi-Fi. I just took my Wi-Fi off. Oh boy, standing by. Can't hear you. You're frozen, buddy. Are you back? We're going to make this work. Yeah, hold on a second. We got to decide here. Do we want the microphone or not? Can you hear me? Nope, you're back. You can hear me. There you are. Here I am. There we go. We're we're gonna we're taking the podcast mobile right now. You know. I'm honored. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, can you hear me? You you can hear me. Yeah. Yeah. We're back, baby. Hell yeah, baby. So this podcast. <laughs> This podcast is very rough around the edges, right? Like, it's not like a professional podcast or anything. I think it's been all about making it work when we can, right? And I'm in camp. I'm up north. I'm in hotels with bad services. I'm in camp with no service. And uh, right now I'm sitting in the truck. You know, we're, we, we make it work when we can. It's all about the excitement and the fun. And this will be like fucking the late late 70s an episode in the late 70s and i'm blown away that i've made it this far yeah we should have like a little intermission song when it when it flags out like yeah exactly <laughs> so speaking of blackout i got from from that before we cut out that you woke up on the side of the road uh from a whole bunch of mixed missed calls and texts from your wife and your coworkers. Yeah, so I woke up on the side of the road. These guys were laying down cones. And, uh, hey, you all right, bud? I'm like, no, no, I'm not. No. So uh, I woke up. Like, cash was gone out of my wallet. Um, but my wallet was in my front pocket instead of my back pocket. My credit card was used multiple times, so it was frozen. Couldn't get an Uber back to the training center because of that. So called the training center. They sent out their uh, point person and uh, picked me up. And I was like, hey, you know, uh, we, we, uh, we going to the police station or no? Let's, let's see if they get you back to class. At that point, I was just like, dude, I just want to go home. Like, I was, yeah. I was so checked out. I woke up. I felt like I was hit by a bus. I'm like, I, I just, I just want to go home. I got my wish and, uh, <laughs> My my poor wife, she ended up picking me up at like two in the morning from Cleveland Hopkins Airport. And I felt so fucking bad. And uh, everyone, I, I, I've been honestly uh, just overwhelmed with the amount of people who've reached out. And just like, hey, man, you all right? Hey, you good? I heard what happened. I'm just like, I'm alive, you know? Uh, nothing uh, terrible happened to me. As far you as a tattoo. I, I did, I did <laughs> I, <laughs> that. I do remember though, and uh, it, it's that's that's right here. I don't know if you could see it. Yep, yep. But uh, yeah, probably one of the 
unluckiest nights of my life and uh the most ironic tattoo i have on my body now so well you got a cool story to tell out of it anyway and i mean like your wife probably ain't laughing and your boss probably ain't <laughs> laughing and like but like you gotta you gotta and, and maybe you're not laughing like no like hysterically yet but like in a couple years this will be something like hey remember that time i went to vegas and yeah uh, like and it was like the hangover the the initial shock is definitely gone because uh man i i just it, it felt like i was in a like alternate universe for a little bit like what just happened like i flew <laughs> across the country i was there for a day and i was sent back <laughs> like really that was an eventful 24 hours though yeah yeah to say the <laughs> least to say the least but uh oh shit i uh you know that's not how i wanted to represent the union obviously uh but hey you know uh i asked them i'm like hey is this something that happens a lot or <laughs> like, yeah, unfortunately this has happened a handful of times i'm like maybe talk about it like an orientation like hey when you go out tonight travel with a buddy make sure you uh you know make sure that your drinks are good yeah. like never in a million years would i thought that would happen to me and it did and you know spreading any kind of awareness and I heard from a buddy of mine that like some people were even like sticking little patches on people and that was enough to that crazy wow. craziness. But I will say this, uh, my first time I was in Vegas was for the third year apprenticeship program. And I probably walked the strip the whole time. I, I probably slept like two or three hours that whole weekend and i just saw it all you know yeah this time i was like all right i'm gonna go to old vegas everyone was like well you didn't go to fremont street what are you thinking and i'm like all right i'll go and uh i heard there was a guy who made like six figures a year and all he does is charge people like five ten bucks to kick him in the nuts that's it bro I want to do that. Make six figures. And uh, hey, man, good for you. It was my mission that night to find him. I was like, I'm going to pay this <laughs> man five bucks. And I'm going <laughs> to. <laughs> man, like, I wonder if he has any children. No, no chance. And if he does, are they like <laughs> attached at the head and like, you know. Like... <laughs> no, not a chance. Yeah, that that's oh, that shit. option's gone. I think. <laughs> fuck, man, that's wild, man. No, that's I'm. I didn't know when we were gonna get into this story, but fuck, right off the hop is good. <laughs> I figured get it out of the way. You know, we can get into like, apprentice stories too, because I've I have some pretty good hazing stories. Uh... <laughs> I'll just jump right into it. So I was reflecting a little bit. I, I've, uh, I hate tooting my own horn, but I started my journey March 2018 as a first year apprentice. And uh, while I was a first year apprentice, I was at uh, a dental school downtown. And oral, gotcha. We were throwing up these prefabricated panels and uh i was working with a laborer and uh every time i messed up this laborer put a rock in my pouch so by the end of the day i had like seven rocks in my pouches like ridiculous amount like i kept messing up and messing up and messing up and everyone thought it was hilarious the next day I clock in, Roy looks at me, he's like, hey Murph, how many rocks are gonna be in your pouches today? I'm like, not a damn one. Five minutes into my shift, I put the extension ladder the wrong way, upside down. <laughs> he looks at me and he's like, here's one big boulder. 
and he gave me that boulder. He said, every time we fly a panel, you're just going to hold on to it. He wrote with Sharpie on that rock, I'm with stupid. And every time a panel went up, I'm holding that rock. Eight hours, I was doing this. <laughs> you never did that again, did you? No. <laughs> this, the, the big wig for the company comes by, of course. And he's standing next to the foreman and he sees this. He's like, what's that apprentice doing? And my foreman explained it. He thought it was the best thing ever. I get, like, this dude was such a hard ass, like, old school, just like, work, work, work. What are you doing? What are you looking at? Why aren't you working? Like, that kind of guy. And when he saw me standing there with the rock, it just tickled him, and no one ever saw that. And uh, I'm, I'm glad that brought it out of him. So I have a little piece of this rock still <laughs> in my back. And uh, people still... Uh, People still hold me, hold me to it to this day. Uh, some people still call me Johnny Rock. <laughs> Johnny Rock. So, do you do that to uh, apprentices now? No, no. I just I throw pan heads at their hard hats. Um, <laughs> just, just good, old, <laughs> just good old fashioned uh, mental warfare, you know. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, I work in the oil and gas industry. I know all about mental warfare. Yeah, you, 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 like, I feel like some of these guys have been in the trade so long. It's like, it's almost like prison rules. It's just like fresh fish. Like, let's see, let's see what we can do. Like, how, like, like let's, let's see if we can break this kid. So and are you fourth year now or like, are you journeyman? Like, where, where yeah. are you at now? Yeah, I've been a journeyman for a couple of years now. Good for you. Still getting rocks put in your pouches. No, no, uh, man. Oh shit. <laughs> this, this story might get me canceled, but whatever. Before I left for Vegas, I almost uh, got into a fight with a guy on the job site. He uh, he accused me of moving his pouches into the rain on lunch break while I was filming. <laughs> so he uh, called me a few homophobic slurs and all that. And I got in his face and I'm like, go ahead, swing. You know, I'm right here. Your move didn't do anything, right? It rubbed me the wrong way. And uh, it was it was on a Friday. I went to the store immediately after work and I bought a whole box of tampons. I wrote his name on each tampon and attached a note on each tampon that said property of so-and-so if found, please return. This job site I was on had two buildings. So I got in early on Monday, early. 45 minutes early and I started at the building across from me on the seventh floor put two on each floor all the way down went to the next building top floor two on each floor all the way down and I had one left signed in in the sign-in sheet where everyone signs in put it right next to the sign-in sheet went to my work area and then I waited <laughs> and of course, I was the first to sign in. You know, my coworker Lynn, the uh, older guy, that uh, he's so old, so old. <laughs> I hope he sees it. <laughs> I'm just busting his balls, but he uh, he comes into the work area. He's like, you know, this is probably your last day on the job site, right? I'm like, I don't care. I'm like, it's on. Sure enough, dude shows up to my work area, pissed, just fuming, right? And he's just like, you do that shit? I'm like, what are you talking about? I have no idea what you're talking about. Got my face. I was like, we can pick up right where we left off last week if you want. Your move. Still, nothing. He's like, you're a funny guy, Murph. And he put his fist out for me to bump. I'm like, well, I'm glad I can entertain you. And I walked away. Just so, <laughs> so cold, man. 
I just like, I was still fuming over it. And uh, about an hour went by and I'm just like, I walked up to him like, hey, we can settle this like adults or we can meet up after work and fight it out where you want. And I put my hand on like we could squash it, your choice. We shook hands and uh, I apologized. I said, uh, <laughs> I mean, life's been crazy for me. So I've had a short fuse. So I'm just like, you know, I apologize. I'm like, yeah, that was, I took it a little too far, I think. And uh, I, I'm pretty petty. And he's like, hey, you know, it's all good. And uh, we squashed it. My foreman texts me. He's like, hey, whatever happened between you and so-and-so, it needs to stop. I can't have my two good guys arguing on the job site and at each other's throats. I'm like, hey, we already squashed it. Like, it's done. He's like, good. All right, cool. Couple, couple hours go by and uh, I'm working. Dude comes up to me and he's like, hey, I thought we were cool. Four people have come up to me and, and given me these tampons. Like, he's like, how many are there? I'm like, probably the amount that's in a pack and he's like are you serious i'm like <laughs> yeah i was like i was like i'll gather them all up at lunchtime and i did i i, I uh, went around did my same thing seventh floor worked my way down now i didn't find them all because i was in blind rage and i was just tossing them and get you know. and uh it's it's all good. We squashed it. My last day was uh, yesterday on that job, and I shook his hand again. I said, "Hey, no hard feelings, and hope to see you on the next one." And you know, like it's uh, we we're playing for the same team. You know, there's no reason to get all bent out of shape and like do all, any of that. So our lives are stressful enough on the job. Hell yeah, we're all there to do for the same reason, right? We're all there to clock in, you know, <laughs> <laughs> feed our families, and uh, go home, right? Ultimately, and you know, you don't have to get along with everyone on the job site, but you know, it, it, it life's better when when we do get along, or at least we're amicable, you know. Yeah. Absolutely. No, that's huge, man. That you did, you did the, you did, you did a huge thing there. You know, you, you like, you know, oh, yeah, I'm sorry, bro, and and you picked them all up and and you shook hands and whatnot. That's, yeah. that's pretty good of you. I have a couple stories similar to that where like, I maybe I was in my younger twenties, so like, when I was in my younger twenties, I was a nuisance and I let everyone feel it, right? Like, buddy, I I made a bet with buddy that he couldn't quit smoking, and if he did, I'd give him a hundred bucks, and. uh He's like, man, I'm like, day five, no smokes. Day five, no smokes. That's huge for me. I've been smoking for 30 years. Where's my hundred bucks? I'm like, man, after I give you this, you're probably going to go buy smokes. Fuck you, right? <laughs> and and uh, he's like, oh, he was mad, right? And I had a bottle of water in my hand, and he took my water. He's like, well, this is mine now. I've, I've had it with you, you know? Like, And I went in my backpack, and I cracked another one, and I started drinking from it. I'm like, okay, have the water. He grabs that one. Like, all right, I grab another one out and start cracking it, start drinking it, and he just walks away in a blind rage, right? <laughs> and and man, like he messaged me on Facebook like fucking geez, that's probably 22, 23. He messaged me probably like three years ago on Facebook, being like, Remember that time you made a bet with me and you couldn't fucking stick to your word? I'm like, Jesus Christ, man, like fucking let's go let's go take care of this shit i'll come to you you know and right like you know like fuck man get over it that's great there even was with a... my co-workers now man like when they like because i've had to fight for every square inch of what i have here right like as a shorter guy uh in the oil patch as a guy who makes videos i'm heavily scrutinized right you're yeah. singing my song <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> So like I'm 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 heavily scrutinized and you know I've had to fight for every square inch of, of respect coming in you know and I feel like that's a lot of young guys too right a lot of young guys coming into the industry any industry they have they gotta fight for it but you know so I I've you know if I if I come in and I'm a little late or I oh making videos again hey eh? you know you know shit like that 
Well, buddy, he showed up to work a couple a couple months ago. We we showed up to site at like midnight. We had to be on site for midnight. We sat there till six o'clock in the morning doing nothing. He, we literally had a nap, right? And uh, he he it was time to start work, and he threw a hissy fit, right? And I'm like, oh, okay cool and i didn't see him leave he left he left his high and dry he, he left site and went back and parked the truck and uh the dispatch had to send someone else out and i sent a text to the group in the group text i'm like uh what, how did i word that i'm like you know what the best part about this guy is it it, it it's it, no i no, how'd that go the guy they sent out was like he was a half tard right so um I, I, I sent the text. I'm like, it's pretty wild when they can send this guy out and he make and he makes you look bad, right? Like it, it's it's a it's a pretty wild day when even this guy makes you look bad, right? Yeah. And my boss calls me right away, right? He's like, hey, he's like, I know it's frustrating, but can we not can we not start shit at six o'clock in the morning? <laughs> and, and he's just getting to the shop, right? I'm, I'm six hours into my day, right? He's just getting there, yeah. and I'm like, man. Like, you should hear what this guy just did and everything he's doing. And he's like, I know. I've already got the rundown on it. He's like, but can we not? I'm like, had I done that? Had I done that? I'd be stomped up and down on, yelled and screamed at. You know what I mean? Like, I've had to fight and, and scratch and, and and just crawl my way to where I'm at, you know? And yeah. and uh, you, this, these new guys, they just get a fucking pass, right? And that... that blows my mind it, it it sucks dude and i can't keep my mouth shut especially the older i get right the older i get it's like i'm throwing a couple comments in there and it's gonna land how they land i don't care well he didn't answer the text back until several hours later because he went back and he went to sleep he woke up he saw the text and he's firing back at the text and i'm starting to text back and my boss calls me immediately he's like hey please do not answer that back just i'll deal with it you you just leave it alone he and i'm knew. like all right all right so like two months go by and i walk into the shop and who do i see this guy sitting there right and i've forgotten all about this interaction right this happened two months ago whatever it is what it is two months, so i walk by him and he's like you're just gonna walk by me like that huh nothing to say now huh and i'm like what are you going on about he's like th he's like that, that that night, that that morning, you sent the text. Blah blah blah. I'm like, oh, bro, you're still going on about that? Like, man, get the fuck over it and let's move on with our lives. And he starts telling this story about what had happened. I'm like, I don't care. That was two months ago, man. Like, I've forgotten all about it. I forgot all about it when the truck broke down an hour later and we were scrambling to fix it. You know, so many other things that have happened since then. You know, and. uh yeah, he, he couldn't get over it, man. And uh, for two months, he sat on it, stewing on it, waiting to see me again. That was I thought that was wild. So the next time you encounter an issue like that, you got to ask that person. You got to be like, hey, man, you know, you seem stressed out. You seem like, you know, you're just on edge and just have you ever tried, you know, the medicine triactin? What's triactin? Yeah. Triactin like an adult. <laughs> hey there's the there's the door that's where you leave your feelings you can get them after the eight or ten hours you clock in because the people that you work with like sticks and stones man it sticks and yep. stones that and, and that's the bottom line like i got yep. my i got my 10 you went like this <laughs> i got paid the same yeah you know, i've worked with plenty of fucking assholes in my time and that's their problem that's not mine you know that's yep. my problem temporarily that's their problem for their whole lives you know yeah oh yeah um i was gonna ask you so how did uh how did you get into the whole social media thing like what made you decide to like start a tiktok and start documenting you know <laughs> your day and fucking your wild shenanigans that have followed barstool sports 100 percent uh sports so i had a video go viral it was me and the porter john of like heavy winds taking a porter john up and 
me, you know. I seen that video. Yeah, I'm in heaven now. Yeah, that one took off. I'm like, oh, that's that's pretty funny. So one day, me and my buddy Scott, we're we're on break, and uh, like, hey man, like, I need someone for this video, like this left hand and anger video. Like, all you got to do is say Murph, left hand and anger, left hand and anger, and that's it. And uh, it took me 30 seconds, took us 30 seconds. I posted it. And the next day, Barstool Sports reached out to me. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Like, like this is crazy. You know, like, never thought, you know, I'd be there, you know. And uh, yeah. it, just, it just snowballed from there. And, and I'm glad I kept up with it because... I mean, I probably, I've honestly probably recruited 20 to 30 people into the union just messaging me like, hey, how do I get started? Different states, all that. I'm just like, where are you at? I'll I'll find your local and get you started. I'm like, let's, let's go. Like, <laughs> kidding me? So yeah. just making a difference in that aspect, like, I wish I would have started my apprenticeship earlier in life because it's benefited me so much. And to be a clown and have people like reach out to me and just say, Hey, I, I like the work you're doing. Like, how do I get into this? Like, I didn't, I didn't think I'd ever be here and I didn't think I was ever going to be doing this kind of stuff. And, you know, I've always been like a class clown, but, uh, you know, I've had so many people come up to me like, Hey man, don't stop. And I was, I was going to stop. I, uh, I got kicked off of two jobs in one month this year. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I really, I like, I drove home with no music one that day. The second job I was kicked off of, I, I really did. I drove home, no music, just thinking about my actions. So I'm, just like, <laughs> I'm like, so I was, uh, I was with a contractor. I started with this contractor day one. They took care of me for three years, kept me on drywall. And I was like, hey, I'm not going to journey out being a board hanger. Sorry. Went to a different contractor ended up going back to my first contractor and uh and as a journeyman so my first day as a journeyman i was back at this very first contractor i, I was with that i left in my third year of my apprenticeship and um i was uh i was working at uh progressive field downtown in cleveland and uh Cleveland Browns play there? No, no, no. Uh, Guardians now. They were the Indians or the Guardians now. Oh. So I was working, yeah, I was working at the baseball field. And uh, one day after lunch, I saw a gondola. It was filled with cardboard. Me and my buddy Mike got back from lunch. And uh, without hesitation, I just jumped in that thing and it tipped over. And it, it was just, you know, it, it was just, it was just funny. And he's like, it would have been a lot funnier if you did it off a ladder. I'm like, you're right. So I did. I jumped off the ladder into a gondola. About a week prior, I was uh, in a harness. And uh, <laughs> my buddy lifted me up while I was in the harness. And I was just dangling there. And it was like 20 seconds. Like, whatever. I didn't think anything of it. And... Uh, Turns out that was the reason I was fired. Uh, they had to check every <laughs> harness that the contractor had, every harness that they had. And I didn't know about this. Like, I felt terrible afterwards, of course. But, like, you know, like, when I was in school, like, we saw plenty of examples of fall safety. So I was like, oh, why, why not? Like, what can it hurt? Turns out me throwing myself into a gondola wasn't the reason I got fired. It was me dangling from a harness. All fair reasons, you know. <laughs> both of them are equally as fair yeah i hold zero resentment and i uh and i i understand their decision <laughs> so. well 
you did you did get your logo out of it, right? Like, I did. Uh, jumping off the ladder into the gondola. Yep. I, we called that like a trash cart, but I, I, I call I call it the Air Murphy sticker. Oh. Yeah. I gotta get me one of those for my iPad, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna send you one. I promise you. <laughs> send, send two, send two. I'll put it on my lunchbox too. <laughs> I appreciate that. So, I get fired, right? And uh, this contractor that I've been with, that uh, I just left yesterday, actually, for a better opportunity. They hired me a half hour after I was fired. And uh, I'm so grateful. No so, yeah, I'm so grateful for that. Uh, I had plenty of contractors trying to snag me, and uh, they took me in. And uh, I met a lot of good guys with this contractor, and I'm definitely going to miss quite a few of them. So, the very first job that I was on for this contractor was a. Uh, Werwin Williams, we'll say that. Oh, and, and uh, I made my Sean Paul video, and and uh, it was lunchtime, and uh, it was the working with AirPods, Sean Paul. Some big wig in Chicago saw it, <laughs> called the job site, got a hold of the job site superintendent. Job site superintendent called my foreman. I got a text from my foreman. And it literally said this. It said, hey, dumbass, grab all your company tools and come down to the trailer. I already knew what was going on. So come to find out this big wig in Chicago that saw my video was just like, this is why the job's behind. This is and it's like, I just got here this week, dude. Don't blame me. <laughs> like, <laughs> So needless to say, they uh, they threaten a lawsuit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, you're just a fucking blue collar menace, is what you are. I, I love it. I don't. I, it. I didn't plan this, you know. And I was just like, yeah, I'll take the videos down. It's not that serious, dude. Like, relax. Like, Jesus Christ. Like, you know, I, I was working hard for you guys, and and you just whatever. Hey, you know what? <laughs> so. After I was kicked off of that job site, I've been on this one for the past few months and uh, yeah, left on my own terms and uh, going to seek a better opportunity and possibly run work and, uh, and, and shape the future of these uh, young carpenters. <laughs> <It> just... <laughs> Don't do as I said, do, do as I say, not as I do though. I mean, Hey, I, uh, I I feel like we can really uh, change the culture here because there's no fucking reason you have to go to college, be in college debt, and not find a job, you know, when you can go to school for free and be in zero debt when you graduate and be making the same as people who did go to college. Like, fuck yeah. Yeah, you might get cancer but who cares throw your life away <laughs> <laughs> well everything I, will give you cancer now you go work a, an office job you sit staring at the fucking blue screen for how long uh you know you sit in your chair all hunched over here like i got coralic or whatever the hell it's called and you know you you stare at a computer screen your eyeballs get cancer yeah. you know you, you you're sitting in a in an office chair your balls are like tucked underneath you you might get ball cancer from that you never know all you i'm saying know. is i wouldn't change a damn thing and i'm so happy i'm in the trades and doing what i do because i wouldn't have it any other way i, I really wouldn't it's uh oh, no, man it's a it's a career you know i i i wish that they'd push the trades more because we need guys you know hey we talk about this all the time on here now Especially since uh, I think uh, Slim Brick. Uh, Love that guy. Yeah, yeah, he's good shit. Uh, we talk about this all the time now, and it's that you know marketing is a weak point for blue collar, right? Yeah. And you know if we can make it look, you know we're we're making good money. We can make it look like we're making good money, working hard, and having a little bit of fun at the same time. 
Dude, yeah. If that's what gets bodies in the door, then so be it, man. You know, like, um, they don't have an issue with what I'm doing. You know, I've, I haven't had any issues. I did take a couple videos down over the years, but like nothing crazy. Um, you know, it's actually been more than welcomed. It's like, hey, we need some laughs around here. You know, like, you know, we're away from home for weeks, months at a time. We need we need some laughs. We're missing everything that we love. Absolutely. 100 yeah. percent. You know, you're, you're you're working hard. Why be miserable doing it? You know? Yep. Yep. It's exactly, that man. I feel like, exactly. uh, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like I've definitely uh, helped morale on the job site quite a few times. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah, for sure. And you know, like you said about how many people you've gotten into labor, man, into the union. Sorry. Um, I get messages all the time from people who don't know where I'm from, from all over the world asking, Hey, how do I get into the oil and gas industry? Well, like, can you get to Canada? Because, you know, I can tell you how to get jobs here. And they're like, well, I'm from today, Brazil. Guy in Brazil was listening to my podcast. Just a couple weeks ago, I was saying, I don't have anyone in South America. Here we go, baby. We're expanding. New roots. Woo! Right? And so there oh, you go. Yeah. He said it's... he was listening today. He's in Brazil. And he was wondering, you know, um, how, how do I go about getting a job there? And I'm like, dude, I honestly wouldn't know anything about the work visa or, or the citizenship thing. You work on that and I can try to help you with the other stuff when you're here. Right. So and you, just, you yeah. can't just pick up a hockey stick and just, <laughs> just, <laughs> just come on in. You know? Grab a hockey stick, <laughs> jump on your moose, head to the nearest igloo and down a bottle of maple syrup. We got, yeah. we got all that and Drake. Like, <laughs> come on. Oh, <laughs> shit. Wheelchair Jimmy, man. Have you seen his dick? I fell into the hole. Yeah, absolutely. I, My uh, God. It's It's been messy. It's been messy. It, it, dude, it, it has been messy. And when I saw that, I got messy. Right? Like, it's hard not to. You got to admire when another man's got a beautiful package, you know? Well... For me, it was uh, like I remember when the Cavaliers were in the playoffs and uh, and when the Raptors were in the playoffs. And I remember, I just remember Drake on the sidelines that like all the time, just like, like being too much, you know? <laughs> just, yeah, like it's big dick swinging in his pants. You know? Like he was stepping on court, waving his towel and shit. Like he was just like. Like, you know, you have rules, you know, and, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to start Drake hating now. <laughs> hey, listen, calm it down, waving that towel around with those fucking gray sweatpants on. My wife is watching this shit. <laughs> right? Like, you know, <laughs> shit. Settle down, Drake. Settle down, wheelchair, Jimmy. Hey, I got to ask you this. Yeah. Have you, have you ever made the Port of John Walls? Has your name ever been on there? Dude, yes. Now, the it? first time I may have put my own name on there. <laughs> but like, hey, that's just, give me attention. <laughs> give me attention. Look at me, you know. Um, that might have been the first time. But another time I walked in and saw it, I was like, I didn't even do that one. That's impressive. <laughs> yeah. 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 Some some guys are real artists. I've seen some some Picassos. Let me tell you. And, oh yeah. Uh, and uh, it's heartwarming. Like it, it, it really is. It's like it's like you have someone dedicating their hard work and time and dedication to you. Like like their fans. Yeah, you get like a whole caricature. You know, yeah. some mean words underneath. Like. <laughs> Yeah. I haven't made I haven't made it yet, but I I'm waiting for the day. <laughs> so, so back in middle school, I had this girlfriend. Her name was Devin, right? And uh, the Debbie. No, Devin. Like, like the boy, Devin the boy, but she was a girl. I hope. Anyway, <laughs> so, so we were hanging out at the park near her house called Bernie Arbor, and. Uh, she busts out a marker and she's like, have you ever decided, ever just decided you want to write on walls? 
I'm like, yeah, I've never done that before. Right? So we start writing on the walls. We wrote shit like, you know, Richard was here. Because my name is Richard. Dick Richard. You know, Richard was here. And she wrote, Devin was here. Right? We wrote all this other shit and whatnot. We got a little lovey-dovey on the wall. And fucking, then we decided the smart idea was to write our principal's name on the wall. Her name was Miss Luxon. Miss uh-huh. Luxon sucks balls. Right? <laughs> Single file Hampton style was the fucking Classic. thing. Anybody listening to this podcast from back home that went to Hampton Heights knows exactly what I'm what I'm saying and how single file Hampton style, you know? And like that's how you had to walk down the hall. Single file Hampton style. Anyways, they, they demoed that fucking school. I was the last graduating class and now it's a subdivision, so whatever. So um people we were walking out and this guy, the janitor, whoever walks walks by he's like did you guys do that what no of course not we, we're just walking walking through the park right and uh next thing you know we're at school a couple days later and we're being called to the principal's office the police are there right well when you write your own fucking name on the on the wall and then write hampton single file hampton style and the name of your principal they know where you are right it wasn't me <laughs> Hey, yeah. Well, hey, listen to this. So I guess they questioned her first and she 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 had her thing and then they questioned me. And then I'm like, no, nope, I didn't do that. No, that wasn't me at all. And they're like, really? They showed me another picture. How come your name's on it? And I'm like, I am so sorry. I didn't mean to do it. I you know, I, I you know, turns out Devin fucking denied the whole thing. Deny, 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 deny. Right? Like smart on her. Gangster. Right? Gangster, you know, we were in grade seven. This bitch was light years ahead of her time, right? And like, fucking, yeah, man. And, and like, yeah, I, I just, I folded like a fucking lawn chair, right? <laughs> and then so, so I get home and my dad's waiting for me. He's like, So, how was art class? And I'm like, Oh my God. And he's like, I heard you try to lie about it at first, but then you cop to it. You're a bit of a bitch, but good job, right? <laughs> And then, and then fucking Devin and Devin's mom and my dad had to have a chat and we weren't, we weren't allowed back at Bernie Arbor for a long time, which turned out to be problematic in my twenties because for a little bit, I lived right outside Bernie Arbor and I took my dog for a walk there. I fuck 20 years later. You think it would be forgotten, right? Yeah, whatever. (laughs) But so yeah, yeah, it was a good time, man. I folded like a lawn chair and Devin was just a stone cold criminal. Gotta love it, man. Probably yeah, take, man. She, she broke it up with me grave. a couple. She broke up with me a couple months later, unrelated reasons. She wanted a man that was just as bad as her, I assume. Yeah, but I mean, hey, he's not gonna have that mustache. I mean, come on, look, look at no, that. Fuck that, no. Do you think Devin got 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 twenty twenty four Dick Frost? Fuck no. 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 She got prepubescent fucking. Every time the wind blows, I have a hard on Dick Frost, you know, like. Yeah. Devin, if you're listening, you fucked up. <laughs> ah, no, no. If my wife is listening, you're welcome. Shortly, <laughs> shortly after, shortly after Devin, my wife and I got together like three, four years later. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So like, thank God Devin, Devin wanted greener pastures, right? Absolutely. Everything yeah. happens for a reason. I'm a firm believer in that. I really am. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Devin, Devin ended up having a kid really early. Sorry, Devin, if you're listening. She ended up having a, re- a kid really, really, really young. Like, I think it was only like two, three years later where she, she was popping one out. Which, good for her. She's done having kids now and she's my age. She's All her kids are like fucking pretty much in high school or older. So, Yeah, I became a dad at 20. Good for you, man. Good for you. Yeah, she, uh, my oldest, my daughter, she turned 11 yesterday. Are you with the mom still? Nope. No. Oh. No, that's how that's how I became a master carpenter, one divorce, you know? That's uh <laughs> that's required if you want to further yourself in your career in carpentry. There you go. Hey, I got a question. Do you, do you, do you know what uh viscosity is? Oh my god, you're taking me back to like Biology, maybe is that like the thickness of a liquid? That is the thickness of a load, baby. Yeah, <laughs> the thickness of liquid. Where I'm going with this? 
is that the podcast is sponsored by the Mud Man, and the Mud Man deals in viscosity. You know, viscosity, the viscousness of the fluid going down hole on a, on a drilling rig, right? When you're drilling, you know, it's got to gotta remain pretty, you know, can't be too thick, can't be too thin, got to be just right, you know? You that whipping up that baby batter for down hole, you know? I thought you were about to talk about load-bearing walls, you know? Whoa! <laughs> no, I've been in this room, <laughs> I've been in my room in this camp for six years. You want to know how, what, how good the load-bearing wall is? Come take a look. Bring the black I crossed the line. <laughs> no, no, shit, no. no. There's no crossing lines on, on this podcast. That's for damn sure. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, the mud, man, the mud Man sponsors the podcast, you know. He, 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 for all your drilling fluid and laboratory testing equipment needs, www.mudmarket.com, man, for... Ha, ha, for all them thick loads, boy. Um, that's like the best like ad you could. <laughs> I got the mud man. Hey, the mud man's got your back and your front, and I've got the mud man's back. That might be a little bit weird, but like, yeah, <laughs> fuck yeah. Hey, man respect <laughs> shout out to the mud man i love that guy oh i don't even know him i love him too <laughs> yeah, he's good shit he's good people man he's got a sick logo you would like it actually you would like it uh, i don't have it on me right now but you've probably seen it i've had it i've had it oh i've had a sticker on my hard hat that's been in some videos i've got the, a hat for sure that's been in a recent video and some shirts that's fantastic. Yeah, I wasn't. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't. I wasn't expecting that ad. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait till you get my Manscape one. I'm working on a Manscape. Uh, a, Ma a Manscape uh, uh, sponsorship right now. I messaged them a bunch of times. I don't know if if they appreciate my pitch about you know something about manscaping and dick and you know shit like that. So. You're just out here making moves, man. I like just trying. So like, damn, like so much respect. <laughs> I told you, I told you to get on Instagram, and was I wrong? You weren't. I uh, I was I was strictly TikTok for a while, and I was just like, oh man, they're gonna ban TikTok. Maybe I should expand my horizons. And uh, you literally like, in the nick of time, you're just like, hey, I'll show you the way. Sure enough, man. I'm like, like I got, I, I want to say almost sixty thousand followers on TikTok, and I've got, I just hit thirty thousand on Instagram yesterday. I'm just I like, oh, I saw that. Though I, well, the first time I looked, you, you grew a little slow with the, like to start. I was like, all right, he'll get there. He'll get there. It was like four or five hundred, and then it was at two thousand. Then I looked back, and you were over ten. And then you know, you're 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 by approaching 20 when I last looked and you know and man I, I knew I knew your content would do well over there uh, it, it's uh two very very different audiences and oh, yeah. I, I I wasn't ready for it because I, I'm you got a lot of older guys on Instagram than TikTok and if you want to talk about being scrutinized, like I said, I, I, and, and I mean it, like everything I film on the job, like it's on my 15 minute break or my 30 minute lunch. And yep. sometimes I don't eat cause I'm being an idiot. And these guys just always assume I'm just doing it on the clock. And it's just yeah. like, Hey, I'm about to have four mouths to feed. Do you think I'm going to fuck around like that? Asshole? No, I'm not. I'm going to fucking do right by my family, but the comments, you know, like the comments, like, why aren't you working? Why aren't you working? Shouldn't you be working? Like, do none of you guys have breaks? Do you guys not have like human rights yeah. where you work? There are no breaks. <laughs> like, 85 hours a day, yeah, 72 yeah. years straight, boy. You know, <laughs> you go 91 hours straight without a break. 
I lived through two world wars and I've seen ice spice. I, I know enough. <laughs> you know what? You know what? I, I was thinking today, fucking boomers are the last fucking people that I want to be taking any kind of advice from. Anytime a boomer yeah. uh, has anything to say about me, any, any judgmental fucking comments or any advice they want to give, they want to give advice. I walk the other way. I don't want to, I keep your mouth closed, bud. You're the last person I want to hear from. You know what I mean? Like the boomers think like my father-in-law, man, like he's got a lot to say about my lifestyle and uh, like my job and how we live and stuff like that. He's like, Oh, your wife should be working and you, you shouldn't be going away to work. You're abandoning your children. And I'm like, Oh yeah. Cause when you go away in the middle of the afternoon to cheat on your wife, you know, you're not abandoning your whole entire family. Right. Get fucked. Buddy. My, my goal here is, uh, you, what you've accomplished like i don't want my wife to work anymore i don't want yeah. her I, I want her to spend time with the kids and that's what she wants and i am fucking trying my best to get there like through this nonsense you'll get there bud you'll get there you making money on tiktok and instagram now right no no tiktok most money i made off of <coughs> anything has just been through my stickers and that's Locked been in. probably a few hundred bucks and then you'll get there man yeah no I, i've been uh I, i'm determined man trust me I, i've i've got so much material up here and, and like i'm not trying to throw shade to any other blue collar content creators but like i've seen my stuff like being you know i feel like i'm setting some trends every now and i've again. used your shit i've used your shit yeah, no, 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 but but you you reached out to me. There's some that just like, like no credit, nothing. You've tagged me and all that, but like, like if I actually use someone's content and spin it in my own way, like I'll at least try and tag them. Be like inspiration. Like, like I did, I spun it in my own way. Yeah. Yeah, it's just common courtesy. But like, you'll have like these like you know, there's there's certain like big channels that'll just take your shit too like oh there that. is there is fucking right there is man um yeah. so that happens to all of us man go listen to, go talk to rough iron go talk to slim brick it happens to me man it happens to all of us you know like people are just like you know and i mean in a way the, that's kind of what the internet is tiktok is you know it's it's sort of like that you know i've had a lot of people tag me in the stuff that they do and then there's a lot of people that don't um, that Billy Madison video, man, there was too fucking fire not to do it. You know, like I went and bought <laughs> lipstick for that. I was like, you know what? Eight bucks for lipstick, huh? And hey, I'm not done with it either. I've got another one coming, right? At like least I've got another idea for it. At least you bought yours. I used my wife's and <laughs> I smashed her fucking lips. I didn't even, I, like, I, I don't. I didn't, I've never put on lipstick, so I didn't know you're supposed to turn it and then put the cap on. I just smashed that shit. And she's like, <laughs> she's like, <laughs> the, uh, uh, it's amazing how older people or some people like take the internet as Bible, right? Like, cause, uh, buddy's like, imagine showing up to site with lipstick and putting it on. And I'm like, bro, for one, like, I didn't really do that on site. I went to an old abandoned lease. There was some wellheads there, and I did it there. Actually, I filmed that video in three different spots, and I was so fucking mad about it because I went to the one spot, and then when I went to the other one, like, I fucked up. So then I had to restart it, go back to the other one, go do that spot part over there, and I couldn't get the music to line up like you did. You know, you made it a little longer, and it it was a process let me tell you it yeah. it took it took me a long time to nail that and then post it um but i uh i, I still had like a little shade of it on my lips after break yeah <laughs> and like i even told my coworker, I was, my buddy lynn <clears throat> i'm like all right man i'll see you after break i'm gonna go put some lipstick on he's like what <laughs> <laughs> Well, all my coworkers were a little confused because at first I was asking the women I work with, hey, you got any lipstick you're not using? Hey, you got any lipstick? It took me two days to like, all right, I got to go buy the lipstick. Yep. Right? 
I was even <laughs> asking like the front desk girl, like, dispatch, you got lipstick? Hey, you got lipstick? I mean, I have no shame, man. I showed up on Halloween dressed up as a mime and and it was <clears throat> So I texted my foreman on that job the night prior. It was October 30th. <clears throat> like, hey, man, I went to the doctors. I lost my voice. He said, I'm not contagious. Are you OK with me coming in tomorrow? He's like, that's the best thing I heard. I don't have to hear you talk tomorrow. Great. I'm like, cool. thanks for understanding. I'll see you tomorrow. I show up dressed as a mime. I held character. I didn't say anything to anyone the whole day. I was pulling imaginary ropes, building imaginary fucking walls and shit. It was fucking great. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to start dressing up on every Halloween. I don't give a fuck. The next Halloween, I came in as Batman. And that was at Progressive Field. Yeah. Yeah, I love that fucking, those videos you made with that costume. <laughs> so... <laughs> So in the morning before I went to work, I uh, I just blacked out my eyes, you know. Yeah. And uh, my wife saw me before I left, and she just shook her head, probably thinking about the decision she made of marrying me. <laughs> but, uh, showed up on the job site uh, for stretch and flex bright and early in the morning, and everyone was staring at me. This one iron worker, he's like, <laughs> he was just staring at me. And I, I walked past him real quick. I'm like, where the fuck are you looking at? <laughs> and he just lost it. <laughs> <laughs> this works. This works good. So my foreman, he sees me and he just lost it. He saw me from across stretch and flex. He came up to me afterwards. He's like, please tell me you're going to hold a character all day. I'm like, oh, day. <laughs> I'm like, so, a lot of street cred on that job site. Let me tell you, I, uh, I I really boosted morale that day, and I was the only one dressed up, just like I was the previous year as a mime. The only one dressed up. Now, I got a buddy. <clears throat> He's no longer in the Carpenters Union. He's an elevator guy now, but he showed up on Halloween one year. We were talking about this because I was telling him how I dressed up. He's like, I never met anyone really who committed like that. And <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? And he's like, he's like, I showed up to the job site one year, completely dressed in drag. And I'm like, no, the fuck you didn't. No way. Like you want to talk about walking into the flames. Like, yeah, he had a skirt, high heels, lipstick, eyeshadow, all of it. This is before any like social media too. Like, like I just like <laughs> you win, dude. Like, like that that takes balls. Like I was nervous just walking in as a mime and Batman, but you you came in dressed in drag, like at a blue collar job. Like you <laughs> already know what's gonna happen when you walk in, and and sure as shit. He uh he he left that day regretting his decision because <laughs> <laughs> he was ridiculed. And uh in my mind, he's just a legend. But... Fucking right, man. Gamey game, you know? Sent it. Game recognizes just game. Sent it. And and absolutely like him and I we worked together for a little bit and then we were separated because we were laughing too much. <laughs> like you know, hyenas like I mean we were too busy laughing really I, I like it, it just wasn't good for production anyways so it was probably <laughs> in the company's best interest anyways so <laughs> but uh yeah he's making the big bucks now uh uh building elevators so good, good for, for him, him. <laughs> yeah you I guess you could say that guy's uh job has its ups and downs eh <laughs> not with that day. i think it's just ups <laughs> so i gotta give you credit though because like you know like what i've noticed in the blue collar niche on on social media is that you know like there's not we're not really competing right we're we're there's a lot of guys that are like you know we're, we all got each other's back right we all get it we all we're all like 
You know, how far can we take this thing and what can We're we do? We're all with it? here because we fucked up. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and I've noticed, you know, like with me even, uh I'll I'll look I'll look at sounds a little bit differently. Like I did one the other day with like you think you're the real buzz lightyear, right? I did that one. And like that fucking scene you did from Billy Madison, man, it kind of changed it for me a little bit, right? Where it's like all right, like I've done, a, I've done movie sounds here and there a little bit once in a while, but they're a little generally they're a little bit harder to do, right? Especially how you did that one, and or I guess how we did that one now, but like how you did that one to start, um, it, it sort of changed it a little bit because like right, you really had to dig deep to find how how to make that work, right? Yeah. Right. There was no <laughs> oh, there's that sound. How can I make it work? You listen to it a little bit. Oh, I can't. And then you scroll on. And or save it and try to come back to it later. But like, man, like, you know, every time I come by a movie one, it's like, all right, this one, there's always a way to fucking make it work. Yeah. And and honestly, the what sparked that one for me, um, like I know there was a bunch of different spin-offs for for that Billy Madison one, but <clears throat> for me, I I think of like my favorite movie scenes, like like my ultimate favorite movie scene and I'm like, how can I make this relatable in a blue collar aspect? And yeah. And it it'll it'll weigh on my mind while I'm working and I'll just think about it and, and I'll think about different angles and all that to go at it. And it always just comes back to either a sparky or the safety guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Safety it's always the safety guy for me, right? Like no offense to Sparky's, like I, I've, I've, like I have so many Sparky buddies on different job sites, and like it's just, it, my career is just so different now because of this nonsense. Like people know who the fuck I am, and I, I'm still not ready for it. I'm still like, in in shock. Like really, I, I am. Like, like I, there's guys on the job site. I'd be like Murph. I'm like. I don't know, what's up? Like, you know, like, I never met you, but hey, you know? And uh, <coughs> it's just been, it's been, it's really been heartwarming because, like I said, I feel like the trades just aren't fucking pushed. And it's just like, like, you can have a good career with great pay and still have fun and not hate your life if you choose to do so. Let yep. me show you the fucking way. Yep. You know? Absolutely, man. I love that. I love that you said that. Um, do you know? Do you know who Rough Iron is? I do. I do. I've seen. Uh, I've seen a few of his videos. Uh, Rough Iron and I are good buddies. There. Uh, we were talking. He was on this podcast like last year, and uh, we were talking about it. And he said, uh, "He's like, you know, you've done some videos, right? Where like, I thought, fuck, I wish I, I wish I would have thought of that, you know, and." So he's like, and he's done a lot that I say the same thing too. He'll save that video and then like months later, come back and do it. Right. Like he's yeah. like, all right, enough time's been done. Or, and I told him I've done that too. You know, like um, I did a video last summer where I sat on that video for over a year before I redid it. I'm like, all right, I'm scrolling back through. I'm like, ah, right, yeah, it's been over a year. I'm redoing this one now. Right. And it's kind of sort of like your left-handed anger video. I I'm good. At, I'm doing that eventually. But I don't, I like, it'll be a long time from now, but like probably like in another year or so I'll, I'm going to do it. But and, and I love seeing it applied to like different trades. I love seeing like different twists and all that, you know, it, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's surreal. Really. It is like, like, I, I think the biggest takeaway for me, like, and I mean this wholeheartedly, like. I've sat back and just reflected on the amount of likes, views, reactions from all my videos. And it's just like, I've made a lot of people laugh and smile like on this planet. You also made a lot of people hate you. <laughs> Comes with the territory. You're doing yeah, something yeah, wrong yeah, if hey. you don't have any haters, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Hey, bro. You're not, yeah. You're not doing it right if people always like you. But just to be like a little like glimmer of, you know, happiness and merriment, 
I'll take that. I'm happy. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Mission accomplished. Hell yeah. I've had a lot of fun along the way, you know, and if if this is the last ride for TikTok, you know, if this is the last ride, I can go out saying that, man, we had a lot of fun. We we did a lot of cool shit, you know, and um, I don't think it is the last ride, but if 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 it is, you know, because if the if U.S. TikTok goes down, Canadian TikTok follows, right? So right, and and a lot of my following is based out of the U.S. So you know, um, if if this is the last ride for for TikTok, I I can go down and I can go down with that and and be quite happy with what I've accomplished, you know. And and in all honesty, this this all circles right back to the American government. And what I personally have to say about the American government is fuck the American government. <laughs> Shout out to the American government. <laughs> yeah. Fuck the man. Oh, shit. Um, man, I don't want to keep it too much longer. It's, you know, past midnight there now and, it's, you know, getting late here as well. So um, I like to end the podcast and you said you've listened to a couple. I like to end the podcast, you know, with one last question and, uh, you know, Mount Rushmore has four of the most interesting or, yeah, interesting, but also four of the most influential people uh, um, on the rock, you know. And if you could have your own Mount Rushmore, you know, four people that you look up to, inspired to be there, and inspired you along the way, who would they be and why? <sighs> All right. Give me a second. Yep. That's tough. What a what an ending questioning it that's like a good closing question gee hell yeah man hell yeah all right first one i'm gonna have to say morgan freeman for his voice Oof, i jerked off to that voice Damn. like just think like oh andy loved geology study of pressure and time come on like beautiful voice so Morgan Freeman, number two. Hmm, that's tough. It, it, this is this is you thought about this, didn't you? Oh, bro, this has been uh, going on for Jesus. We're on episode like seventy, the end of the seventies. Yeah, this has been going on since episode fifteen or sixteen. No. All right. Morgan Freeman, Doc Brown for inventing the flux capacitor. Ura. Chuck Norris. Do you Fuck. think Chuck Norris sits around and says that you're on his Mount Rushmore? I don't even want to. I don't even want to be on his radar. I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> and then. I'll go with Keanu Reeves because he's the oh one. shit, bro, yeah. Bubba Yaga. Yeah, that's that's the Mount Rushmore. Bubba Yaga, <laughs> boogeyman. <laughs> the guy just wanted to be left alone in peace to like deal with a dog that his dying wife had left him. That's it. Just wanted to live his life. That's it. Shit, dude. Neo, are you a red pill or a blue pill kind of guy? I'm going to take them both and chase it with some Jameson and see what happens. Oh, shit. <laughs> nah, I like that answer. All right, that's good. That's good. Fuck yeah, man. That's a solid fucking Mount Rushmore, dude. That's awesome. Good for you. That's that's a lot of math. There may be some toxic masculinity issues up there, but like, no, I'm fucking. I, I wasn't anticipating it. Um, you know, I was just thinking about some influential people. Like, you know, you got someone who invented a flux capacitor, a beautiful voice, you know, Chuck Norris, is, uh, uh, you know, you can just, what, come on. And yeah. then Cam Reeves, he's the one. I mean, what, what, you, what else you need, you know? Who, who else needs Nothing. to be up there? Nothing. You know? Nothing. They'll protect I feel I feel like this podcast would be a great disservice if I didn't ask you where people could find you on the socials, man. Because like I think everyone needs if they don't already follow you, I think everyone that listens to this podcast needs to go and follow you. Because dude, like 
when when I when I fucking came across your profile, dude, I was like, you know, it's it doesn't happen every day, but it's like, uh, you know, you know, in Zoolander when when the light shines down on Buddy there, and he, it, what's that fucking thing called in Zoolander where like it's like their aha moment? I can't remember, but like as soon as you mentioned Zoolander, all all I can think of is. I think I got the black lung pop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shit. Uh, Merman, dad. <laughs> fuck, man. What's that called now, dude? Where they, when they, it's going to bother me too. It's, it, it yeah. it's going to haunt me until I actually remember. Yeah. Yeah. It, that the light shines down. And they're like, whoa, baby. There's a fucking video, like a meme on it. Um, Hey man, I I appreciate you having me. Um, yeah, it, we need we need to get your we need to get your tag though. Where can everyone find you before you just hey you can't leave yet, buddy? <laughs> I didn't dismiss you. J Murphy two one six on TikTok, and I think it's J dot Murphy two one six on Instagram. I could be wrong. You need to get on Facebook too. I'm trying to establish that uh, Zuckerberg has been shitty to me. No. Zuckerberg also owns Instagram now, though, right? So Meta. That's a valid point. That's a valid point. And Facebook pays phenomenally. I hope to see it one day, and uh, if not, I'm just happy to spread some laughs. You know, I uh, yeah, I'm not gonna stop doing what I do because I I truly feel like I'm changing the blue collar culture and and uh view on it a little bit and uh i'm i'm happy to happy to change people's perspective on blue collar work instead of just viewing us like uh you know second class citizens or animals like this job site that i've been on like a quarter mile walk to the job site and they had a sign posted in the parking garage uh, construction workers should park on six and seven like we bust our asses for you on this job eight to ten hours a day and you want to make us walk farther okay you know it, it uh it's unfortunate but we're, we're all humans. We all got families. Like, you know, we're like, it's 2024. Like, we landed on the moon allegedly 50 fucking years ago. Why are we still <laughs> peeing and pooping in boxes? What are we doing? We landed on the moon. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm just no saying, way. we can step it up, man. Like, these Porter Johns, like, like, give us, like, a light, you know? Like, Maybe like yep. a little light. So, yeah. you know, that, that would go a long way, I feel. But hey, absolutely would. We're, we're, we're going to get there one day, you know. One day. <laughs> one day. <laughs> Brother, thank you for coming on, dude. I, re I, I appreciate it. And this, won't, this won't be the last time. This is the first time. It won't be the last. You gotta, we're going to have you on again. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having me, and it, and it it has been an absolute pleasure. Fuck yeah, man! I like like I said, man, uh, you're you're a gem, and I absolutely love your content, man. And like, there's there's not a fucking Murphy video that pops up that I don't like, <laughs> not like. You know what I mean? And actually, I scrolled all the way to the bottom. I'm like, when I come across a video I don't like, I'm gonna stop, and I just <laughs> couldn't stop. I I didn't. There was no stopping. So. I appreciate that, man, and I and I hope I hope your podcast flourishes, and I hope you flourish as a human, and I hope that uh, the next time we talk, we're uh, we're we're both in much better places. Hey, are 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 you having a baby? You said your wife is pregnant at the beginning, and I didn't acknowledge that. Yes, she's due in uh, July. Well, July fucking 5th. congratulations! Do you know if it's a boy or girl? Girl, oh, boy or abortion? No, I'm choking. I'm choking. I have, uh, hey, I have two daughters. I have two daughters. So that that'll that'll uh, yeah, that'll put me with three daughters and one son. So holy shit, dude! Sorry to hear that. 
hey, no, I, severely I, outnumbered. Um, I if I'm good at anything in this world more than this nonsense, it's it's being a dad, and I and I take Fuck so yeah. much pride in that. Fuck yeah, man! Congratulations, dude. That's huge, man. And fucking, that's that's everything, man. You know, like this is what we do it for, right? Like I have I have two daughters. Uh, one is six and one is four. And, uh, we always talk about, you know, we're, we're trying for another one, maybe two more. We always talk about if the next one's a boy, we might be done. If the next one's a girl, we try one more time. I think no matter, regardless of what the next one is, we try for one more. I want, well, my, I, when I first got with my wife, I didn't want to get married or have children. Right. So like, you know, it was like strictly just none of that. And then, you know, we got married because it would make her happy. And that's my fucking goal in this life is to put a smile on that woman's face. And uh, then it was like, well, let's have some children, you know. So our kids are very, very well, much, much planned. You know, we had to try to have her. We had doctor's appointments and tests and got to get on some medicines and shit like that or drugs or whatever. And we now we have two kids and fucking they're very much planned and there's one thing that I love as much as they fucking annoy me sometimes as much as I wish I could have drowned one in the toilet at one point. Um, it, it's those fucking kids, the younger one, the four year old, she, so here's, here's the thing. I want my daughters to smash glass ceilings, right? I want them to be strong and independent and take no shit, but I don't want them to take no shit when I'm raising them. And when I'm trying to, when I'm trying to give them shit, I, I need them to be able to take the shit that I'm trying to get them to not take. Whether you uh, believe it or not, you're instilling your values in them every day. Um, whether you realize it or not through every sentence or interaction you have with a person you don't even know in front of them, how you interact with the general public or anyone at all. Like you're yeah. instilling values every day. You're setting, you're setting a constant example and you know, we're all human. We're not perfect. And my kids have definitely seen me, you know, on my bad days and on my good days. But at the end of the day, you know, having all these kids, Thanksgiving is going to be fucking lit one day. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's, so get this. My mom right now is in the hospital for on 72 hour hold. Oh. She, won't, she hasn't slept in four days. She looks terrible. She lives 4,000 kilometers away, which I don't know what is in miles, but I can't be there right now. She has had a mental breakdown before in the past. And I don't know what this is, but like, it was really fucking funny talking to her about it today, though. So she got hearing aids in, and she she had to take them out because she thinks the Westboro Baptist Church is after her. She attacks them on Twitter quite a bit. So she thinks the Westboro Baptist Church is after her. She thinks people are stealing her money. And the funniest thing I heard today out of her mouth was, someone's trying to release her sex tape. And I'm just like, Mom, you don't have a sex tape. Right. Like my sister does. I've seen that one. I don't need to see my mom's, you know, like, please. Yeah, it's enough, trauma. it's enough trauma. Yeah. Please don't do that. And, and she starts laughing and then she and then she starts smacking herself in the face. I'm like, what? She's like, who's spitting on me? Someone's spitting on me right now. And I'm like, what the fuck is going? She might have dementia. They're trying to rule out a brain tumor right now. Um, like, it's fucking funny. Right? And I was telling her, I'm like, I can't wait to get fucking old. If this is what I have to look forward to, I'm looking, I'm pumped. You know, my kids are going to wipe my ass. I'm not wiping yours. I have three, two sisters and a brother there to do that. But, the ultimate revenge. What's that? It's the ultimate revenge. <laughs> it's the ultimate revenge, buddy. And uh, I can't wait till my kids are wiping my ass while I'm smacking myself in the face. Because I think people are spitting on me and they're stealing my money. And uh, yeah, and I was talking to her about a video that I had made. I wasn't, and I was trying to be funny, but her hearing aids weren't in. She can't, doesn't want them in. 
but she put them in midway through the conversation. And all she heard was, yeah, I put that video out. And she's like, oh, I want to see that video. Can I watch that video? And my brother's right there. And he's like, no, you don't want to watch that one. And my sister's like, no. She's like, I do. I want to see it. I think it would be really good for me to see. And I'm like, mom, I'm talking about my porno. And she's just like, oh, yeah, no, no, no. And she took her ear- hearing aids out. Right? Like, oh, shit. If all I'm going to say is if my kids have to wipe my own ass, just take me behind the garage, put me out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, buddy. This has been fun. I'm not going to keep you any longer. It's late. Hey, not a problem. Again, thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. And uh, as I said before, I hope I hope this podcast flourishes. I hope you flourish. I I I, I want to see more of this. And uh, you know, uh, you were a fucking Mike Rowe. Get on this fucking podcast now. Thank you, Mike Rowe. Hold on, let me get in the light here, Mike Rowe. Mike Rowe, are you listening? M- Murph, Murph, what do you got to say to Mike Rowe? Mike Rowe, get on this fucking podcast right now. <laughs> right, yeah. Come on, Mike Rowe. Let's go. You know you want to. You, you know you want to. He'll enjoy it. I, uh, I I enjoyed talking to you for an hour and a half thoroughly. Uh, I, I really did, and I, uh, I wish we could talk more, but you're in Canada, and phone calls aren't uh, – they don't fly like that because you're yeah, they're really expensive. Cost me a dollar a minute. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Hey, this podcast is coming out in June sometime. So while we're on that topic of father, happy father's day, brother. Hey, you as well, man, you take care of yourself, be safe out there. And uh, I wish you the best, man. Hey, you stay frosty. And yeah. (laughs) 